Today, we'll recap the movie Indecent Proposal. Subscribe and hit like before we begin. David Murphy sits in the rain by the pier, feeling bad about his marriage with Diana falling apart. At the same time, Diana is on a bus heading to that exact pier. She remembers something someone once told her. If you really want something, let it go. If it comes back, it's yours forever. If it doesn't, it was never yours. Diana thinks to herself that she's meant for David, and he's meant for her. Back in high school, David, a senior, and Diana, a freshman, met in school. When they were both 19, David proposed to her on that very pier he's sitting on now. Their parents didn't like the idea of them getting married. So they ran away and got married secretly. Since then, they've been living in a simple house. After grad school, David worked in architecture while designing his dream house. Diana, a real estate agent, supported their finances. Despite limited funds, they enjoyed exploring the town together. Eventually, they put all their resources into building David's special house. Diana secured a beachfront property in Santa Monica for its construction. The 90s economic downturn hit during construction. Diana lost her sales job, and David was laid off due to recession fallout. They needed $50,000 to retain the property. Struggling to find options, David humbly asked his father for a $5,000 loan. Still far short, Diana's sleep-talking sparked an idea in David's mind. The next morning, he shared his idea with Diana. The couple found themselves at a casino in Las Vegas, driven by the hope that they could win the much-needed $50,000. The night brought a series of wins, and they gambled relentlessly. At a certain juncture that evening, David was engrossed in a game of craps, a source of much of their winnings. While David was significantly boosting their money, Diana ventured out to explore the shops in the lobby. Amid her shopping excursion, her presence caught the eye of billionaire John Gage. Gage was immediately captivated by Diana's beauty. Though their gaze met fleetingly, it was enough for Gage to follow Diana into one of the stores. As Diana admired the opulent items on display, she stumbled upon an elegant black dress, draping it over her figure. She admires herself in the mirror. At this moment, Gage's voice emanated from behind her, surprising Diana, who had been oblivious to his watchful presence. Gage took the opportunity to propose purchasing the dress for her, revealing his attraction to her. Diana gracefully declined, noting that the dress was available for sale. Feeling uncomfortable, Diana promptly leaves the store. Diana reunited with David, who was celebrating the rapid accumulation of their earnings. They tallied up their winnings, totaling around $25,000. The elated couple reveled in their newfound fortune, with David playfully tossing bills at Diana, who joyfully rolled around on the bed covered in the currency. Their celebratory high led to a passionate night of lovemaking on the bed adorned with dollar bills. The subsequent evening, however, luck wasn't as kind to them. Their winning streak waned, and by the end of the night, they had less money than when they started. In a bid to regroup, they sought refuge in the casino's diner. With only $4,100 remaining, they deliberated whether to continue playing, ultimately resorting to a coin toss to decide. Despite their decision, it was evident that both of them still hobbered the desire to continue gambling. Not long afterward, the couple's fortune took a turn for the worse as they lost all their remaining money due to their heedless pursuit of risk. Leaving the casino, the couple notices some fuss at another table. Billionaire John Gage is playing poker using fancy golden chips worth $10,000 each. Gage had been losing a few games, but when he spots Diana among the crowd watching, he wins his first game of the night. He believes Diana brought him good luck, so he comes over to her and David. He asks David if he can borrow Diana for the game. While David says it's up to Diana, he encourages her to give it a try. Diana goes along with Gage's proposal and somewhat awkwardly joins him in the game. After losing another round, Gage asks Diana about the game she's familiar with. She mentions dice. Upon hearing this, Gage signals one of his assistants with a single word. The assistant swiftly arranges a check for $1 million. The casino gets it ready and prepares a glass box filled with golden poker chips worth $1 million. Gage and Diana are then moved to the craps table. Diana is tasked with rolling the dice. She needs to roll a 7 or an 11. With the whole casino watching, she tosses the dice. Both dice show a 5 and a 2. The entire crowd erupts in cheers, and Diana rushes to embrace David, overwhelmed with joy. At this point, Gage approaches the couple again and invites them to celebrate the million dollars they helped him win. 
He even offers to pay for their hotel stay. The couple agrees, and they find themselves in a hotel room that's beyond their usual means. Shortly after, there's a knock on the door. A man named Mr. Shackelford delivers a red box sent by Gage for Diana. Inside the box is the elegant black dress Diana had been admiring. The one worth $5,000. Diana is surprised and tells David about its cost. They attend Gage's party, mingling and enjoying the night. Near the end of the night, Gage presents the couple with a proposition. Gage offers them a million dollars for one night with Diana, an offensive proposition they decline. Gage departs, leaving them unsettled. Struggling with thoughts of Gage's proposition, they eventually discuss it, realizing it might be best for their future. They decide Diana will be emotionally detached, offering only her body, not her mind or heart, for that one night with Gage. The next day, David contacts lawyer friend Jemmy Green, who scolds him for not negotiating a higher amount with Gage. Jemmy arrives with a new contract, doubling the offer to $2 million. With the arrangement set, Diana prepares to accompany Gage. David kisses her goodbye, joining Jeremy at a nearby bar, where the glitzy Las Vegas environment amplifies his feelings about letting Diana go. Desperate, David rushes to Gage's hotel room but arrives too late. Gage and Diana have already left by helicopter. David is overwhelmed by a sense of helplessness. Meanwhile, on Gage's yacht, Diana is confronted by the reality of the situation. She expresses her resentment towards being cornered like this. Amidst their conversation, Gage proposes a coin toss to decide their fate. If it lands on tails, Diana is free. If it's heads, they continue as planned. He flips the coin, and fate decides against them, as it lands on heads. The next morning, Diana discovers David in their hotel room, looking utterly defeated. Without saying a word, they embrace and share a kiss, expressing their deep love for each other. They decide to return home, attempting to put the ordeal behind them and erase the memory of it from their minds. Back home, they receive the devastating news that their property was foreclosed and sold to another buyer. When they try to learn more about the buyer, they hit a wall due to privacy regulations. Frustration builds, leading David to express his anger by causing a scene at the office. In the following days, their involvement with Gage starts to gnaw at them, particularly David. He becomes obsessed with the past and starts accusing Diana of still having a connection with Gage, allowing suspicion to corrode their relationship. Determined to reclaim their property, Diana uses their million-dollar payment to investigate the new owner. To her shock, she discovers that Gage is the buyer. Diana rushes to a restaurant where Gage is having a lunch meeting. In a burst of emotion, she disrupts the table, sending food and drinks flying. Gage escorts Diana outside, where they engage in a conversation. Gage plays innocent, insisting it was just a business move. Their conversation intensifies outside, with Diana demanding honesty about his intentions. In an attempt to manipulate the situation, Gage makes unwelcome advances towards Diana. However, she firmly rejects his advances and walks away. Upon returning home, Diana recounts the encounter with Gage to David. However, the mere mention of Gage triggers an explosive reaction from David. A wine bottle shatters against the wall, drowning out Diana's attempts to explain. Consumed by jealousy, David refuses to listen and jumps to conclusions. David demands to know if Diana enjoyed her time with Gage. Diana, hurt by the accusation and their escalating argument, avoids discussing the matter. The argument reaches a boiling point, and David storms out of the house, leaving Diana behind. David seeks refuge with his lawyer friend, Jeremy. Diana calls Jeremy in search of David, hoping to reconcile. Aware of their deep love for each other, Jeremy attempts to mediate between them. Despite Jeremy's efforts, the two remain stubbornly distant. Diana repeatedly tries to reach out to David, but he remains resolute in his refusal to communicate with her. Separated for weeks, the Murphys struggle with the void left by their separation. Time drags on as they grapple with their emotional turmoil. Diana receives surprising news at work. The recession has ended, and a wealthy billionaire is interested in buying a house. To her dismay, she discovers the buyer is Gage. Despite her reluctance, her boss pressures her to assist. Reluctantly, Diana spends time with Gage as they visit potential homes. Throughout, he makes advances, met with her firm rejections. Their journey eventually leads them to a sprawling, expensive estate that is already owned by someone else. To Diana's dismay, she realizes that this property belongs to Gage himself. Despite Gage's unwavering attempts to charm her, 
Diana remains resolute in her refusal to give in to his advances. With more free time on her hands, Diana takes on a role as a citizenship teacher. One afternoon, during one of her classes, an unexpected visitor enters the room. It's John Gage. He settles into a saint, capturing the attention of the mesmerized students. As he addresses the class, Gage openly displays his admiration for Diana, seemingly oblivious to the context of time and place. Following the class, Gage accompanies Diana back to the mansion they had visited before. Here, he shares a personal story with her, recounting an encounter from his youth. He talks about a beautiful girl he encountered during that time and how his shyness prevented him from approaching her. He concludes by expressing his desire to avoid such missed opportunities in the future. Caught in the web of his charms, Diana finds herself drawn to Gage, and the two of them embark on a romantic journey together. Meanwhile, David's depression deepens as he reminisces about the happy moments he shared with Diana. Driven by his longing, he eventually decides to make an effort to win Diana back. One evening, David follows Gage and Diana to a hotel. As they approach the entrance, David appears, drenched in rain. He attempts to talk to Diana, but his emotions escalate, leading to a confrontation with Gage. David throws a punch at Gage and collapses to the ground, losing consciousness. Shackleford, a companion of David's, takes care of him during the following weeks as he recovers from the incident. David takes steps to rebuild his life, taking on the role of an architecture professor despite his qualifications. Teaching becomes a passion for him, and he excels at inspiring his students. Jeremy, David's lawyer friend, delivers the news that Diana is pursuing a divorce. Meanwhile, Diana and Gage attend an animal auction where they bid on a hippopotamus. Unexpectedly, David intervenes, using Gage's own money to outbid him. Approaching Diana at the auction, David manages to engage in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her, facilitated by Gage's willingness to step aside. David apologizes for his behavior, revealing his insecurities and fears. He acknowledges the importance of forgiveness in a lasting relationship. He admits that his prior fear was that Gage was somehow superior, but he now recognizes that true value lies beyond material wealth. With a heavy heart, David signs the divorce papers, symbolizing his acceptance of their separation. He then departs from the scene. As for Gage, he observes this poignant interaction from a distance, his expression reflecting a mix of regret and understanding. On the drive back, with Shackelford accompanying them, Gage begins to pick up on Diana's emotional state. Sensing her conflicted feelings, he decides to create a diversion by introducing the concept of a million-dollar club. Despite his puzzlement, Shackelford skillfully participates in this charade, validating its existence and implying that the club involves women similar to Diana who Gage had paid a million dollars each to win over. Seeing through the ruse, Diana comprehends Gage's intention. She realizes that he is pretending to orchestrate this scenario to provoke her, aiming for her to be offended and choose to leave. In this moment of clarity, Diana recognizes Gage's deeper understanding of her feelings and his willingness to set her free. Filled with a mixture of emotions, Diana kisses Gage for the last time, expressing her gratitude for allowing her to move on with her life. This kiss serves as a poignant farewell, marking the end of their complex relationship. Before parting ways, Gage offers Diana the very coin he flipped on the yacht that night for good luck. As Diana chases after the bus, Shackelford questions Gage about his decision to let her go. Gage acknowledges that he has come to realize that Diana's feelings for him will never match the depth of emotion she holds for David. Meanwhile, on the bus, Diana examines the coin Gage gave her and makes a surprising discovery. Both sides of the coin are identical, showing heads. This realization adds another layer of significance to the coin's symbolism. Diana heads to the pier where David had proposed to her, intending to reflect on their love and possibly find a way to start anew. To her amazement, she finds David already there, lost in his thoughts about the apparent end of their marriage. As Diana approaches him, the two open their hearts once more, confessing their enduring love for each other in the same spot where they had once become engaged. What did you guys think of the movie? If you're a man, would you take Diana back? And if you were Diana, would you have slept with Gage for two million? Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.